Hello, my name is Peter Boudreau, and I have been working with uh, people who have had strokes at the Rehabilitation Institute of Oregon for the last 40 years. I've just recently retired. But today I'm going to show how to use electrical stimulation to help a stroke patient if they have a subluxed shoulder. And a subluxed shoulder just means that after a stroke, especially immediately after the stroke, there's a tendency for the muscles that hold the joint together here at the shoulder joint to be very, very weak. Now normally this, uh, the head of the humerus sits in this little dish here securely held in by the muscles around the shoulder, not so much by the ligaments with this particular joint. After a person has a stroke, those muscles tend to be very weak and this uh, uh, bone can sag out of the joint so that you can even see that there is almost a finger length uh, distance between this bone and this bone. And the problem with that is that, that uh, the weight of the arm is hanging uh, out of the socket basically. Um, the, one of the big ways to deal with that is always have the arm supported, whether a person's in bed, sitting in a chair, uh, if they're walking, often we would use a sling to help hold that in place. But the other thing we can do to help this recovery process is to use electrical stimulation to help re-educate those muscles. And the muscles we're going to be working on today, there's a muscle that sits right in this valley here called the supraspinatus, and it connects in here and onto here on the humerus. This is also a muscle that, uh, tendon that also gets injured quite often if a person has a rotator cuff tear. This is one of the muscles that tends to be one of the problems. Uh, so there's four muscles that hold the, this joint together. So we're going to be stimulating the supraspinatus and there's two muscles on this side and one muscle coming from the, uh, this side of the scapula to the head of the humerus. All those muscles work together to uh, help that uh, joint move like it should. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect the electrodes, I'm going to use myself as the model, to these muscles and basically close this gap and recondition these muscles to get back to work. So we'll be showing that. Uh, and I'm going to be using the twin stem uh, FES TENS machine today. To do this electrical stimulation, we're going to put two electrodes on the patient's skin. And you can see here on the skeleton, there's this ridge and this valley here. The uh, upper traps are up here, and we don't want to stimulate them. We want to just stimulate this uh, supraspinatus muscle if we can. So one of the electrodes is going to lay right in this valley. And it's easy to find it on your patients who are thin because you can feel this ridge here pretty well and it's just going to sit above it. Um, if they're heavier, sometimes it takes more time to find the sweet spot. So one of those electrodes is going to be sitting right in that valley. And you can see this electrode is about two inches by three and a, uh, three and a half inches. And that one, I think, is in a pretty good location. It's not too high up on my traps, so we should be good with that. And the, um, there's two different color wires, and the red one is connected to this electrode. The other wire has a black tip to it, and that's going to be right here. There's two muscles that come off the back of the scapula and connect to the head of the humerus about here. And so that's going to help uh, um, innervate those muscles. The unit we're going to use, as I said, is the twin stem. And we use this because it's fairly inexpensive and uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, to turn it on, you press this power button that's right in the center. Now you can see uh, it has a choice of two things, either EMS, electrical muscular stimulation, and that's what we're going to be doing today. On this side, it says TENS, and I'm going to do a different video to show how to use the TENS part of this. 
to toggle back and forth between those two things, you hit uh, this, this, well, we've worn it off on this one, but this usually says M and this side says S. So this will get you toggled back and forth between doing TENS unit or muscle stimulation. So I'm just going to go over to muscle stimulation. And right now you can see it's, it can do three different things. It can do uh, a, a simultaneous, and that's what we're going to do today, uh, in just one channel. Or I can toggle over to, so now the S is flashing. I can press any of these silver buttons to go over to A for alternating. We're not going to do that today, but I'm just showing you how this works. Or I can toggle over to D for delay. So we're not, I'm not going to tell you about those just because you don't need to know that for this particular stimulation. So I'm going to toggle back over to the S. And it's just going to stimulate one muscle how we're going to program it. Uh, now, to my first session with this, if I'm working with a stroke patient, is typically 15 minutes. So if I press this button on the right, this uh, little clock is flashing, which means I could change it to 20 minutes or whatever number of minutes I want this to run. But 15 is a good amount for the first session. I'll talk later about how to uh, increase that time. I press S again, and when you get this, it's not going to be programmed like this. So I'm showing you how to program it. Once you do the programming, then it will stay. Now the default uh, that I like to use is three. each electrical pulse is going to be 300 microseconds long. And so this would allow me to change that, but I'm going to have it stay at 300. Uh, I'm pressing S again, and that toggled over to how many pulses per second there's going to be when it stimulates this muscle. Uh, and so it, has, it says PW for pulse width. And the kind of the default uh, number of uh, pulses per second is 35. Uh, next, we're going, to, we're going to program how fast this ramp up is going to be. Now, normally you would want to have it ramp up in about two seconds. I'm going to ramp up in one second just so you could see the change quicker. If it ramps up uh, quickly, then you can see it. If it ramps up, it'll be more comfortable to ramp up slowly, but uh, just for the visuals, I'm going to keep it on one. If a person is very sensitive, I'm more likely to have it on three or four, so it would ramp up slowly to get to that high point. And then it tends to ramp down pretty fast. And that, the next thing we're going to talk about is it's, I want it to contract for about five seconds. So it's going to go from being flaccid to go ramp up into the joint in one second and it's going to stay ramped up and stimulate for five seconds and then I programmed it to uh, relax for five seconds and I'm doing this just to see if I've got the good spot for it. Once I know I have a good location with my electrodes then I'm going to go to a different mix instead of five to five I'd go to five to ten or five to fifteen just, I'm sorry, uh, 10 to 5, so it's working 10 seconds, it's relaxed for 5. Then I move it up to uh, working for 15, relax for 5. So I want it to be working more than it's relaxing. Uh, but we start slow and build up, because right now the muscle is very weak and it couldn't stand to work for a long time. So we are... Uh, so it's going to be on contracting and says CON contract for five seconds and now the REL relax is for five seconds. So it all looks good. If I press the S once more then we're back to the base screen. So we're good to go. Now when I increase the intensity I'm going to be pressing this button to go up and let's say that I'm, I'm doing it with a patient who says, that's okay, but a little uncomfortable, it's a little too much, then I can go down. So I'm going to uh, 
stimulate this muscle, I'm going to try to have my arm lax. Now, since my shoulder is not subluxed, it's going to be pretty subtle as to what it looks like. And uh, mine, right now I can feel just a little vibration in those muscles, and it's at about a six. So the vibration is getting stronger and stronger. And it's about 17 right now. Now you would not want to turn this up so high that it's painful because that you don't want to have to tolerate that. So now I feel a quite a good vibration in those muscles and I can feel it kind of pulling that uh, humerus up into the joint. I could probably stand just a little bit more. Now as long as I am pushing these buttons, this screen is blue. And now um, it takes that first stimulation is lasts about, as long as I'm pushing buttons, lasts around 20 seconds while you're programming it. Once you're done programming, the screen is going to go from blue to green, and then it's going to go into the cycle of on for five, off for five. I know that sounds a little confusing, and that's one of the features of this. Okay, so the screen is green, and you can see it's stimulating the muscle and then relaxing the muscle. And I'm trying to stay very relaxed just so you can see what's, what it's doing to mine. So it's on, and it's off. So it looks like a fairly good placement for these two electrodes on me. If I was working with a patient and they had a subluxation, it, this would be a little bit more dramatic. In fact, on a patient, it would look like, you know, on for five, pulling it into the socket, and off for five. It would sag out of the socket to the point where you could put your whole finger between this acromion process and the head of the humerus. Uh, and when I'm doing this, I'll usually have the person's arm hanging. If it's supported, then you won't be able to see this change. Once you know your electrodes are in the same, are in the correct spot, then you can start reprogramming this to be more therapeutic. So let's say I um, have this. Oh, let's say I'm doing it with a person and they said, well, it's working pretty well, but I think I could stand some more to get some more elevation. To go higher, you have to press the down button. So if I press down, it's at 20, it was at 23. And if I go down, that will allow me to now go up. So I don't know if that makes sense, but you have to turn it down to go up. Uh, you, I just couldn't, and that's a safety feature. Let's say the screen is green and I press the up button, nothing would happen. So you can't accidentally overload the muscle. Now let's say you were working with a patient or you're putting it on yourself, you're, if you're a stroke patient, and all of a sudden you're saying, ow, 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 that's way too much. You could just pull the plug. That's the quickest way to stop the stimulation. The other way to stop the stimulation is to press down and then M, and that cuts it off really fast. The slowest way is to try to turn off the unit. That doesn't work very well. You have to hit the uh, down button and then hold the off button down and it takes about three seconds, which would feel like a long time if it's painful. So, uh, so let's say that is all working just like you were hoping it would, and uh, but you want to change the time. So you would press the S button because you're doing kind of a reprogramming. Uh, 15 minutes is a good amount of time for, let's say, the first several days. If you find you tolerate 15 minutes, then you could go up higher. If 15 minutes feels like a long time, then maybe stay there for about a week. Uh, but you want to get more time and more sessions per day as you get used to this. So to get the time to be different, you press the S. Now it's changing. I could change it to, let's say, it's a week from now and I'm going to 20-minute sessions. 
I'm going to keep the 300 and the 35 the same. I'm not going to change that. Uh, the ramp time, once I know that it's uh, where it should be, typically we will have a ramp up in two seconds. That's usually what we'll do. Again, unless a person's sensitive, um, uh, then it might be three or four. So two seconds is pretty typical. I press S. So the thing I'm going to change more often is the contraction time. So let's say I've started with five and five. I'd probably go up to ten and five pretty fast, even in the first session. So it's a two to one ratio. And then probably very soon after that, I'd go up to fifteen to one. So I'm fifteen to five, a, th a three to one ratio. And you could even go up as high as, you know, let's say uh, 30 seconds on, 5 seconds off. Uh, these muscles typically work almost all the time holding your shoulder together. Uh, as opposed to, let's say it's a muscle in your forearm that opens your hand. These muscles work infrequently, so they're more of a phasic, uh, temporary muscle. Whereas the muscles in your trunk and your shoulder and your hips work almost all the time. They're called tonic muscles, and you want to retrain these muscles to work more often and for longer periods of time. So the electrical stimulation will bulk up that muscle. It will hopefully have the brain and the muscle talk to each other uh, like it used to before the stroke, uh, kind of with that muscle, that brain plasticity you're working for. Uh, so a good rehab program plus electrical stimulation has shown to be beneficial for a stroke patient. Uh, just the electrical st stimulation all by itself, it's good, but it's best if it's combined with a good full rehab program. And if you watch the other videos on the Legacy Rio uh, playlist channel, you'll see other uh, me giving other presentations about um, stroke rehab and arm recovery. Now, it'll be important for a person with a stroke to talk this over with their doctor to see if electrical stimulation is okay for them. If a person has a pacemaker, then that would be uh, a reason not to do it. You don't want this stimulator to interfere with the pacemaker. Um, that's usually the main reason we might not do this. But again, talk this over with your doctor, work with your therapist, uh, this unit costs around $40, $45, so it doesn't cost very much. Uh, a therapist should be able to help you if you're having trouble programming it to figure out how to work the buttons. But hopefully this video will show you how. Um, and I hope this works for you.